When Final Fantasy released in 1987, the developers Square saw a great and immediate success that spawned a long-lasting chapter in the gaming industry that has yet to end even now. As one of the most prolific series to date, Final Fantasy has sold over 100 million units across the game's releases, a milestone achieved back in 2011. Each release would come soon after the last, and would see commercial success with both Evolution and Revolution in varying ways throughout. After six successful entries in the series, none could have predicted that a brand new JRPG without the Final Fantasy moniker would arise, and become one of the most critically well-received games in Square's vast portfolio in the form of Chrono Trigger. Time traveling to save the world from certain doom, Chrono Trigger has the player explore all kinds of eras from the prehistoric variety to present day to far into the future. On top of this well-conceived setting lies a plot with quite the large cast of interesting characters and a gameplay system that would be similar, yet different, to Square's other JRPGs released around the same time where other JRPGs of the time often included very similar narrative concepts and gameplay offerings, Chrono Trigger offered a surprising amount of variety within this seemingly spent genre. While development was short, it wasn't without hardships. Starting with the promise of a freeing add-on for the Super Nintendo, multiple big names in the gaming industry, ambition, and an unusually large team to work with came many new challenges that were difficult to overcome at times. However, what culminated from this group of hardships would eventually manifest itself into a masterfully created game. The gameplay system's unique, its artwork beautiful, a well-realized setting concocted, and a lengthy but repeatable campaign all make for a game that would go on in the gaming industry still talked about in some communities, and hopefully this retrospective will show you some of the reasons why. This documentary is a way to take a look back to see what made this game stand out from the likes of other JRPGs, and to celebrate its success in Square's giant portfolio, the game known as Chrono Trigger. After Nintendo's extraordinarily successful console that released in 1983, known as the Nintendo Entertainment System outside of Japan, and commonly referred to as the NES, it was only natural for the Japanese company to follow it up several years later. Super Mario World is here. It's one of the new generation of Nintendo games. It comes only with Super Nintendo, and it's like nothing. Commonly dubbed as the Super Nintendo, this new Nintendo console would release in Japan in 1990, and the cartridge capacity for this system would increase drastically. Although the actual values varied, based on costs and different cartridge sizes. Even with this drastic increase in capacity, however, Final Fantasy developer Square was looking for an even higher capacity media for their games. Upon getting word from Nintendo that a CD-ROM adapter was in the works, Square would promptly start working on a new project that would go in a different direction to their in-development project at the time, Final Fantasy IV. Codenamed Maru Island, this effort would include collaboration work with the critically successful Akira Toriyama, best known for creating Dragon Ball. Along with this were two big names in the gaming industry, Hironobu Sakaguchi, who directed all Final Fantasy games up to this point, and Dragon Quest writer and designer Yuji Horii. There were an additional two developers with a good degree of renown, Final Fantasy composer Nobuo Uematsu and battle designer Kazuhiko Aoki. These five members grouping up for a singular entity made up for a highly anticipated game to be sure, and the bunch was literally dubbed as the Dream Team. The compact disc. 
And that's it. With the much greater capacity that CDs offered, a renowned character artist, a multitude of well-known developers and resources that a company like Square would have, this new endeavor was promising, to say the least. To take advantage of the space afforded by CDs, the team wanted to make a game where the player can visit multiple different worlds. During a general meeting, someone suggested creating a premise that involved a time patrol of sorts, and the team was intrigued. Story planner and script writer Masato Kato objected to this at first. As someone who loved time travel and time patrol stories, he knew that dealing with the subject of time travel carried an unusually high risk of becoming boring and unappealing work. His perspective was in the minority of the overall team's opinions, however, and they started work on this new project. Time travel did seem like a natural premise to pursue, since the map itself could change as the player would visit different eras, and was thus decided upon very early in development. The CD-ROM adapter for the Super Nintendo was never completed, however, and once the team realized this, they scrapped everything and decided to revise the project to work on the decidedly 32 megabit cart size. The game became an entirely different project with an entirely different direction, although the team was able to include most of their ideas and time travel was still a central focus for the game. Director and scenario writer Takashi Tokita further reinforces their original ideas being used by stating that the character animation is very high quality due to them working as if they were still developing with CDs in mind. Even without the CD-ROM adapter, the project was still promising with three big names of the gaming industry. This may have caused more struggle than one would think, however, as they would spend over a year just talking things over, an unusual approach for Square. Much of this time was spent in what was described as non-stop meetings with Yuji Horii, who again is the writer and supervisor for the game. At this time, Chrono Trigger had approximately 50 people working on the game, and was described by Kato as being intense, with many experienced people in packed groups often arguing on whose opinions were valid or not. This was a very unusually large group for Square. Kato describes this as having its merits, however, a high-energy environment with people working together on various game events that could be especially fun at times. Akira Toriyama in particular was mentioned as a large source of inspiration for the team, giving them ideas about the world of Chrono Trigger, the character dramas, and was described as conveying a sense of the world and atmosphere. In order to further capture a sense of Chrono Trigger's world and atmosphere, battle transitions were done very differently to Square's other games. Instead of exploring the map that transitions the screen into a battle, like Final Fantasy, Chrono Trigger allows the player to run into monsters in the map they're in, and a battle ensues in the very same area. Thanks to the high speed of the ROMs, this seamless transition was now possible, but not without some troubles. Battle Programmer Katsuhisa Higuchi mentions during an interview that at first, it was incredibly difficult for the team to have battles take over smoothly that isn't too obvious, and wouldn't destroy the field programming and graphics. They couldn't quite pull it off at first, and tended to destroy the monsters. He mentions that in Final Fantasy, many things happen behind the scenes in the second or two when transitioning from one scene to another, but in Chrono Trigger, everything had to be changed in a snap with slower processing speed than the team would have liked and only so much VRAM to work with. They took a lot of time dealing with the nuances like moving the monsters better and characters doing small actions when transitioning to battle. Adding on top of all of this was the different attack patterns needing to be shown and animated from left, right, up, and down for all of the characters and monsters. In Final Fantasy, the player only sees the characters and monsters from one side, but in Chrono Trigger, battles are done in a way where you can see each character and monster from any of the cardinal directions, which added to the amount of graphical data immensely. Higuchi further reiterates how difficult programming all of this was, stating that it was nothing but hard and there were many times he had wished to give up. One aspect of development that surely made this easier, however, was that unlike Final Fantasy VI, Chrono Trigger had 32 megabits to work with instead of the 24 for the former. The game was originally meant to be 24 megs, but the team wanted to show different outfits for the NPCs in different time periods, change town's appearances, include more songs, and add many graphical details in general. 
Another much-needed aid would come along in 1994 when Final Fantasy VI would release. Hordes of staff came to help in Chrono Trigger's development, and director Takashi Tokita speculates that staff probably enjoyed how the team was able to do things that they were never able to do prior. After many struggles throughout development in attempting to create Chrono Trigger, this looked to be quite the unique game being quadruple the size and therefore effort of Final Fantasy IV. But with the short development cycle of about two years or so, the best word to describe this project is most likely ambitious. From its creators, to its premise about time travel, to its increased size and extremely large staff, the game was certainly ambitious in scope and fans would see these efforts come together soon. Chrono Trigger and six characters were shown off in the January issue of EGM 2 in 1994. The combat was described as akin to Final Fantasy 3 with real-time battles, spells that can be cast by multiple characters, and of course, cool bosses. A basic outline of its plot is also given with a preview of its time-traveling mechanic and mentions the idea of being able to alter the future. The magazine also states it to be 60% complete at this point and available in March. あの、2年ほど前、え、during the second half of 1994 came a festival for Japanese magazine V Jump, where gameplay was shown and many details were given. Toriyama's character designs, monsters, and the settings environments were shown. Hori and Sakaguchi were described as doing the scenarios and in charge of the entire system, respectively. There was also a 17-minute presentation showing off Chrono Trigger's gameplay, although the instrument sampling they used was different from the game's final release. Chrono Trigger was featured in the October issue of EGM later that year, without any further details than what was already mentioned or shown. A pre-release build of Chrono Trigger dated on the following month was given to magazines and retailers as a sample before the game's release to generate interest and sales. Barriers were programmed in to disallow people from seeing certain areas. There were many changes and things dropped from its final release. While Square initially anticipated a late 1994 release for Chrono Trigger, its eventual release finally arrived to Japan on March 11th, 1995, with the North American release following in August. The game was an instant success, being the third best-selling game of 1995 despite being a brand new IP at 2 million copies sold in only two months in Japan. Much success was also seen in North America, and thus the game was eventually released for PlayStation in 1999 and 2001 for Japan and North America respectively. Across the board, Chrono Trigger is looked at as one of the best RPGs of all time to date, with extremely positive reviews from publications, aggregators, and fans around the world. Critical praise is given to nearly every aspect of the game, with most criticism aimed toward the game's easier difficulty, length of its story relative to Final Fantasy, and specific features of the various ports. The PlayStation version of the game included anime cutscenes created by Toriyama's studio and animated at Toei Animation. It also includes bonus features accessible after achieving various endings. While these were welcome additions to the game, Reviewers commonly criticize this version of the game for its lengthy load times, likely due to slower seek times of the disk drive, or poor optimization. Many years later, 
Chrono Trigger found yet another platform in the form of the Nintendo DS on November 2008 for Japan and North American regions, this time in Australian and European regions as well on the following February. The developers re-examined content from the PlayStation version of the game, and reworked them into a more complete edition of Chrono Trigger for the DS. While the DS re-release contains all of the bonus material from the PlayStation port, it does so without significant load times, includes a whole host of features specifically for the Nintendo DS, adds two new areas, a new ending, and is largely looked at as the best version of the game to date. Nonetheless, a version of the game appeared on mobile devices in 2011, and is based on the Nintendo DS version. Chrono Trigger was also ported recently in 2018 via Steam and includes some features that received negative reception upon release. Square Enix later provided various updates to address these complaints. Chrono Trigger has seen both tremendous success and positive reception since its initial release in 1995. The cast of characters, time travel elements, unique gameplay mechanics, and overall story make for an incredibly compelling experience on their own. When you factor in the setting, beautiful artwork from Akira Toriyama, and atmosphere culminated from the work of veterans of the gaming industry, it starts to become easy to see why Chrono Trigger has been seen as one of the best JRPGs of all time to date. Chrono Trigger kind of looks like a mashup of Secret of Mana and the Final Fantasy series. An interviewer states, I can see how people would get that impression considering some of the sprites in both games have a Toriyama look. However, none of our playtesters said that Chrono Trigger felt like Secret of Mana, and the Chrono Trigger developers didn't have Secret of Mana in mind when they were working. In fact, almost no one from the Secret of Mana development worked on Chrono Trigger. These are the words of Chrono Trigger's designer and supervisor, Hironobu Sakaguchi, and one can likely understand both perspectives here reasonably well. Combat is performed via turns like in Final Fantasy, but takes place on the field where enemies are found like in Secret of Mana. There's still a number of nuances, however, that separate this title from its contemporaries. Possibly the most important of these nuances is in its tech system. While many actions are still performed by a single character, there's a new mechanic that allows multiple characters to spend their turns on a single action. These are referred to as double and triple techniques, techs for short. These are often powerful actions that can result in devastating damage, or tide-turning help that also allow for more tactical gameplay since it comes at the cost of all of the involved characters' tech gauges being depleted. This idea initially came from getting individual character animations looking good, as employees really enjoyed it and thought it would be even more fun if characters moved in unison, working together. There were other ideas that, in theory, would make for a good addition to the game but was ultimately cut for being too annoying or difficult for players. One of these mechanics was enemies that could only be killed with the correct weapon. One enemy may only be killed with a bow and arrow, for example. Whether it be this, or other mechanics, many playtesters during development initially complained about the game's difficulty, stating that it was too hard. Related or not, Sakaguchi still liked the idea of implementing a system where weaknesses are prevalent and thus elemental affinities were added. This would encourage players to use characters that had a particular elemental affinity, giving more reason to bring back characters into the party. As far as the clear-cut mechanics of the combat are concerned, Chrono Trigger achieves a delicate balance between difficulty, refinement, and innovation for JRPGs of the time. However, the largest and most prevailing aspect that impacts the gameplay of Chrono Trigger would have to be its time travel. As the game became easier, the time travel mechanic itself was also made easier to compensate for the fact that it's easy to make a confusing time travel game. Sakaguchi mentions that the players would often get stuck and need to consult a walkthrough. As a result, he wanted to make use of the more challenging areas by putting them in as optional content for the player. Furthermore, the team made an area called the Brink of Time, where the player could go to to receive hints to progress in the game's story, which was also linear, likely to ensure that it wasn't too confusing. 
The map changed, sometimes drastically based on the era. Map designer, Mami Kawai, while taking instructions from the story event staff, was sometimes told that his work didn't match their image for what they wanted and required a lot of revisions. This may have been partially due to the large staff involved in development, where even a simple message can be difficult to convey across 50 to 60 people. The map environments and changes were well worth it, however, as time travel ended up playing a large role in Chrono Trigger's gameplay and story. The most popular part of Chrono Trigger ended up being events that caused time paradoxes, or just took heavy advantage of the time travel in general. This was so pervasive that the playtesters often referred to them as Chrono-like parts. Chrono Trigger also offers an option for a second playthrough, using your progress from the first game, known as New Game Plus. This was due to the testers wanting to travel through time even more after beating the game. One benefit from this is added replay value from choosing to do different things during the game, as the game includes different outcomes for the actions performed. Sakaguchi even mentions to having changed subtle details from the player changing their behavior even slightly. One hard part of development regarding time travel was in checking for bugs, which often appeared in other places when seemingly fixed. As far as further hardship goes, Aoki mentions that at some point, their files became unreadable that brought development to a complete halt. Somehow, these files had changed their date to 1960, and the computer couldn't read them. While this didn't end up being catastrophic to development, it appears as though their computers noticed the attempt at making a time travel game and therefore time traveled itself. A truly impressive feat. The present day for Chrono Trigger is 1000 AD as main character Chrono decides to go to the Millennial Fair. He runs into a girl named Marl, who mentions feeling out of place and walks with Chrono. The pair meet up with Chrono's childhood friend, Lucka, who demonstrates her new teleporter. Marl volunteers to be teleported, but her pendant interferes and a time portal is created, sucking her in. Chrono and Lucka manage to recreate the portal to chase after her in 600 AD. They soon realize Marl has been mistaken as being the queen for that time, who's actually her ancestor. The real queen's location is still yet unknown, and the team, with the help of a new member, Frog, set out and find her. After returning to the present, Chrono is arrested on charges of kidnapping Marl and is sentenced to death. Lucka, Marl, and Chrono all flee by using a time portal that lands them far into the future, 2300 AD. Civilization has been largely wiped out by a creature known as Lavos that appeared in 1999. The three vow to prevent the destruction of their world and find a robot named Robo. The crew find an old sage at the end of time, Gaspar, who helps them acquire magical powers and this unlocks the ability to challenge Lavos whenever the player wants. Depending on when the player decides to do this, one of any 12 different endings can occur. Not only are the endings themselves tailored towards those who would want to play through the game a second time, but it's also the events that occur throughout a given playthrough. As one developer mentioned in an interview for an example, even if you are found guilty during the trial the first time around, you may be found innocent the second time. 
One system that was kept in mind was dubbed the ATL system, which stands for Active Time Event Logic. The idea is that players can freely control their character during dialogue, and the narrative could unfold in a variety of ways depending on the player's decisions. Having a mute protagonist also allows the player to add some character to Chrono. One developer mentions in an interview that while both approaches for a protagonist have their merits, you're also giving that character a definite personality if they have that dialogue, whether the player aligns with their personality or not. Personality in particular appears to have been a large focus for the game, a huge factor for making this story in particular so impactful on the player is how fleshed out Square made these characters. While many JRPGs have the story primarily revolve around the protagonist, Chrono Trigger puts its characters front and center for its story. Even with this focus on quality for its characters, however, the game also manages to include a surprisingly large quantity for its cast while still keeping its standards high. While many aspects to the game's story are deep due to these various elements, story writer Masato Kato mentions having many struggles during the story writing process. One difficulty was in deciding on what kind of timescales would be given to both, the story as a whole, as well as the individual quests. There was also a worry of making it too much of a chore for the player, as it can be easy to just encounter an event and then have the player visit the various points in time to see what could have changed. This would have been too formulaic, however, and thus, there was a focus on ensuring the player knows of a clear cause and effect from an event, if there is one, instead of having the player guess the time to go back to back and forth constantly. It's clear that there was a lot of effort and care put into making Chrono Trigger's story meet an interesting balance between content and the main story, choices for the player to be able to make, and have it all be accessible without much filler or confusion. While the quality of some arcs are arguably better than others, there's still little doubt that Square ultimately made a cohesive experience, one that can be enjoyed to this day without much difficulty, and is still very well regarded as having an excellent story throughout. Chrono Trigger would be looked back many years later as an excellent experience throughout, one large indication of this being its transformation into a franchise. More immediately, Square would release a Satella View game in 1996, a side story to Chrono Trigger. Masato Kato wrote and directed the game thinking of Chrono Trigger's ending as having some unfinished business. When asked of a sequel, Sakaguchi mentioned specifically that if they can recreate a certain feeling that one acquires when exploring Toriyama's worlds, he would want to recreate it perfectly for a sequel. As a more fully-fledged game, Square would release Chrono Cross for PlayStation in 1999. This was a sequel featuring a new setting and cast of characters and presented more of a theme of parallel worlds. Like Chrono Trigger, Cross was also universally praised and was also a success with over 1.5 million copies shipped. Since these releases, there have been some statements by Square employees giving the impression of wanting to create another game in the Chrono series. Sakaguchi mentioned the developers of wanting to make a new Chrono game and Square applied for a trademark for the name Chrono Break in the US and Japan, but was dropped in 2003. December 2006 saw the release of Blue Dragon with Sakaguchi as a writer and he mentions it as being an extension of Chrono Trigger. There have only been wishes expressed since then when talking about a potential Chrono sequel. While a new game in the Chrono series would be nice to think about, in some respects we already have the best case scenario. A great grouping of highly renowned developers in the industry, literally known as the Dream Team, worked together to create an incredible title that would be lauded for decades post-release. That's not to say a sequel would be unwelcome, of course, but with a sequel nearly as well regarded as Chrono Trigger in the series, a plethora of ports given to Trigger, and active communities for the game 25 years later, it becomes difficult to say that the series has ended on anything but a happy one. In the Chrono series exists parallel universes, where one world is the same one that the main characters were born in and the other being that of a world largely the same with some events, however, being crucially different. While none of us can definitively state whether other universes exist, one might wonder what all would change if there was another. Whatever the answer may be, 
I think many fans would rejoice in the Chrono Trigger that we have in this universe, and hopefully I've shown you some of the reasons why. Thanks for watching.